What's going on everybody? We're gonna make a video talking about the race truck and everything we got going on with it and what all we have left to get ready for race season. So uh, here we go, here's all the details of the race truck. So here she is in all her glory. The truck itself is a 06 Dodge Ram 2500. Uh, it was originally a 5948 truck, um, wasn't a six speed. Now, we do have a sleeve six seven in there and we'll go over the details on that here in a minute um as far as the truck goes the truck is from up north this is chris nolt's old truck he built it for ucc back in 2017. um he lost interest in it and kind of i guess quit on the project when uh the block blew out the back and went through the firewall can't really blame him there he was running a big triple setup so uh that block was bound to die but now after four odd years or something of it sitting in everyone's garage and or sitting there torn apart she finally runs and moves again and will be back um at all the odss races i don't know if chris raced this thing at odss i'm guessing he did um we're pretty tickled with the truck it had a lot of the hard stuff already done um not enough of it but the truck already was back half for the most part. All the factory cross members are cut out. Uh, it is still factory frame rail in the back. It is still leaf spring. We will probably end up four linking it before, uh, before we're done with it. It does have a remote fuel cell. Um, for suspension in the back, looks like he mounted some uh, dual adjustable shocks, um, factory rear end, factory chunk. It does have a different yoke and a different drive shaft to help a little bit but it's also got cow tracks not my favorite i usually prefer just regular traction bars but some people uh say these are pretty good so we'll give them a shot um, if they ain't working i'll change them uh let's see there's our new 8-2 race transmission cross member uh front end wise everything's stock uh, i don't know if you know much about third gen race trucks but majority of them the front end is stock in you don't really need to change anything. I do have a flat fab limiting strap kit. Don't really see a lot of people running these, but uh, we're gonna give it a shot. Also have Willwood brake kit from Innovative Machining Solutions. Um, that lets us run 16 inch wheels. We're not gonna, but uh, we're probably gonna end up running these Bogarts over here. I got these off Cody Fisher, they're 17 by 11. Bogarts, pretty good condition. Um, tires might have a couple passes left in them, but they're about done for. But gotta have pretty wheels on there. It's kind of our deal. Anyways, Air Dog is our title sponsor for 22. They're our main sponsor. Didn't really talk to many other companies because we already had most of the parts. I had all my injectors, uh, pumps, everything. The other stuff that I ended up buying was just odds and ends parts. So that's it for the most part. 80,000 mile grandpa truck, clean title. And people like me have to rip them apart. Oh well though. We'll hop up here and give you a better video of the rear. So here's everything in the rear. Got our air dog pump. We just run a single pump. They told us that should, that should be plenty. Um, we're gonna take the word for it. You step two on it, but I think Chris was running quite a bit more fuel than we were and more pumps. We're just running a single 14 mil, so one will do. Um, battery is located in the rear. We're running single battery. Um, we did opt for the Innovative Machining Solutions Willwood Rec Kit in the rear also, along with the front. Pretty nice kit. Uh, I like it. I like the fact that you can put Willwoods on one of these trucks. The kit was pretty incomplete. Has no instructions, nothing, no diagrams. Had the wrong brackets. Um, and does not come with anything for brake lines, but we figured it out, got it done. Not a big deal. This is not exactly a plug and play market. You kind of have to, uh, figure it out yourself. Um, so it has a Earl's, well, it's got Earl's cap, but I believe it's just a fabricated fuel cell that somebody's made. I think it's probably five to eight gallons, a five gallon jug will fill it up, but got a single brake light mounted in the rear. It's a rigid brake light. 
we did get rid of all of the factory wiring on the truck. All that it has is a standalone harness. Um, there is no tip em, no ABS, nothing. There is no factory wiring harness for these taillights, nothing. So we went ahead and wrapped them to match the body to make it look a little better while we were doing the graphics, the big air dog graphics. Um, we did go ahead and relocate the radiator into the bed. Uh, most people don't do this. It does make it a lot easier when you're working on anything up front, um, especially anything at the front of the motor because that radiator's not in the way, it's not hot, it's not bothering you. Uh, I've ran it a bunch and so far I've never seen coolant temps over 150 and I haven't ran it far, but it seems to be working pretty well. Um, I wanted to run just a setup like this to keep it out of the way, be super clean with these Dash 20 fittings. Uh, it turned out pretty good. We got our overflow right there. Trans fan, trans cooler. As you can see, it is 850 certed. But pretty tickled with the radiator setup. Turned out pretty clean. It does go into the cab with these little billet fittings right here. They did clean it up quite a bit. Pretty happy with them. And uh, everything going on in the back of the truck with the stainless brake lines, all that. Sorry, this is taking so long. I'm trying not to fall off the gooseneck. But we'll go up here and look at the interior. So, as you can see, the doors are completely gutted. There is not an inch of bracing left in them. There is no door hinge. There is nothing. It is as bare as it gets for a factory steel door. This is still considered an all steel panel truck. The bedsides are steel. Windows are plexi. That's tinted plexi. This, it's got some homemade uh, homemade latch right there, but it does the job. Uh, we got a Sparco remover, removable steering wheel kit. Probably one of my favorite parts of the truck. Just a nice touch. Uh, full manual valve body, obviously. Let's see. There's the cage, you can see it. Has a Kirky seat. It does have a net. We are trying to qualify for, uh, to be able to run in the 590 class. And this thing is 850 certed. Um, line pressure gauge, I keep that in there because I'm paranoid. Uh, have all my switches right there. The nitrous bottle bracket has not been mounted yet. And the wiring is not done on the inside. Uh, we're gonna get rid of all this factory harness stuff. We took 90% out already but uh, there's still a good 10% kind of floating in here. But overall, we're pretty happy with the inside. It needs to be a little bit prettied up, but it's ready to go. I still do need to buy a data logger, race pack, or a AEM. We'll go up here. No mirrors because mirrors aren't fast. So up front, that's where the magic happens. That's where she's pretty. Uh, we kind of designed the whole front clip of the truck to be super easy to remove. Um, the owner before us had already made the bumper quick disconnect, so we did not have to do that. Um, it comes off, it's got four push buttons, comes right off, you can take it off in about a minute by yourself, uh, if not less. I mean, it's just you struggling a little bit, maybe one-handed. But we got an on three budget builder intercooler to kind of it's, uh, I believe they call it their budget builder kit. It's not a cheap intercooler, but it is what most people use for their projects like this, like a, a custom project, I guess you'd call it. Uh, I did not want to use the stock intercooler. I wanted it to be different on this. The radiator's in the back, so we didn't, uh, didn't really have anywhere to mount it. Did not come with the factory brace right here. So I decided I wanted to do something a little different with it. I also did not want any boots on the boost side. Um, so this is all vibrant Vangin, so you can flex, and V-Band. V-Band to our King Speed build intake horn. They did a killer job on that. Um, actually most of the billet parts on this motor, if not all of them, are King Speed. Let's see, yeah, the side draft's King Speed, valve cover's King Speed. Um, 
that water neck fitting is king speed i believe the only thing on here that's not is i have a fire punk lower water neck adapter but uh that's the only person that made that one so uh it does have an armory standalone harness i'm not sure how much longer we're gonna be running that we're having problems out of the harness uh not to trash talk them just the reality of it uh sns not sns extra g 14 mil race pump sns 300 overs for fuel uh ported head side draft as you can see it is a 67 motor it is sleeved it does have cost or cast 67 pistons brand new ones waggler comp rods uh, main studs girdle it is stock crank and i believe that's most of the engine specs that at least matter let's see uh, as far as turbo side goes, um, my buddy Dawson over here made me a badass hood stack. He killed it. He probably had 10 hours in welding on that thing, but uh, he didn't give up. He killed it. We'll get some more detailed pics, or I might drop a pic of this. He really did kill it. Um, he also made all the intercooler piping. I am not a welder. But we got a Ronin gated T6 and a T6 s485 five blade stainless diesel of course i've heard these things are indestructible so we're going to try one out we're going to spray we're going to spray it a lot we got two kits of spray here and a belt motor we'll see how long it lasts uh these cast pistons are only supposed to be good for 1500 horsepower so we will see um we're looking to push 14 to 15 on fuel um even if we have to up an injector size i don't think we will with the engine that we've got, but um, especially it being a T6 big single. Um, I believe it's a one, 132 back housing too. So uh, she's got some flow to her. We are running a single gate. I do wish we would have done dual gates since we're already here now. Um, my number one goal when I was assembling this truck was to make it super clean. Um, there's a little bit of dirt right here, but as far as like the wiring goes, all of it's pretty tucked in. You can't see most of it. Everything's loomed. Um, and it all goes into this nice bulkhead fitting in the firewall. There is no factory harness. Gone. None of that. No ABS. No tip them. Um, the brakes are... Uh, God bless that. I can never remember these. Uh, Willwood makes them so you can manually adjust your brakes. There's no ABS, anything like that. You can turn this knob and adjust the pressure on the brakes. can never remember the name of it. But that's pretty much the race truck. Um, it is completely useless besides a race truck. Could never turn it back to stock. It's too cut up, got a cage. Um, our catch cans mounted over here, our nitrous. We do have a controller. We have a two bottles and a bracket already. All of it ready to go. It does need to be wired in and plumbed. Um, this truck will be going to Maverick Diesel in Illinois to have all the last little things tidied up. Uh, as far as the truck goes, um, the only thing left that's really been our biggest problem on the truck is a ECM problem. Well, it's more of a wiring harness problem. The ECM on the, on the truck is fine. Uh, it does not have a intake manifold temperature sensor, which uh, goes right here behind the rail, if you're familiar with the 6.7. Um, it goes behind the rail, and without that sensor, the truck doesn't actually use the sensor in this case, but without the sensor in the harness, um, rail pressure is going wild. So we can't get it tamed. We're either gonna have to change the ECM or the harness. This is what uh, everyone I've talked to has said. Um, as far as the electrical side of it, um, that's a little bit beyond my knowledge. This harness, when we got it, already had problems. It is brand new in the box, it's just whoever and not to throw names, I'm just honest, whoever built it either wasn't paying attention or didn't know what they were doing for half of it. Uh, OBD port was wired wrong, throttle pedal was wired wrong. Just, uh, just a couple little things that really set us back. Um, we do have to get a new serpentine set up for the front. As you can see, this pulley is bent. Uh, it is held in by a bolt. Um, it worked for a while, the bolt bent. And then now the pulley is riding a little bit sideways and it started to cut through the belt. So I took the belt off just to get it out of the way. 
did not want to eat through a belt and shoot it into the turbo because we do run open turbo and all I've done is start the truck and load it on the trailer. So Maverick Diesel is going to get a new serpentine set up. We would have had it done before now, but we have been busy. We have other shop things to do, things that keep the shop open. Race truck is not really the biggest priority right now, but there she is. Um, we're going to clean her up some more over the winter, paint some things, powder some things. Let me hop down here and give you all a better view. But yeah, there she is. Uh, we will be racing all of ODSS 590 this whole next year. Uh, we've already got a trailer already planned. Um, already made time. We're going to do it. Might not do any good at it, but we're going to try. Might lose every race. Don't care. We're going to have fun. We're going to try it. But carbon fee break. This is to kind of just show you how gutted these doors actually are. There's no springs, nothing. I mean, they weigh nothing. There's our dual billet bottle bracket. All our controllers. This hose is actually the coolant lines from the rear radiator. Uh, they actually come all the way through the firewall, go through a bulkhead up here, and pop back out. And then they are billet right there. It's just a super clean design. I think Motion Raceworks makes the fitting. I just really liked how clean it was. Now it was overly expensive to do this and kind of dumb, but it turned out super clean and that's what I was after. I really didn't, I really just wanted to be the, the truck to be clean. Most people slap these race trucks together and just slap them on the track. And I understand that's what they're here for, you know, to go down the track, but why not? Why not make it pretty when you're doing it? That's why there's so much billet parts on it. But like I said, King Speed, King Speed Sleeve 6.7, 300 overs, S485. We're shooting for 14 to 15 on fuel. Um, hopefully we can get it. If not, we've got two kits of nitrous that will get us there. But uh, super stoked. All right, guys, that's all I got for the race truck. Uh, we're gonna drop it off at Maverick Diesel this week or next week, not sure when you'll see this video. Um, and then as soon as we get it back from them, we'll, uh, we'll have an update video.